Hello, my name is Andy McAvoy. I'm a wildfire research scientist in the College of Forestry at Oregon State University. This short video is intended to orient you to the science behind two wildfire related maps that OSU developed to support community wildfire risk reduction in Oregon. These two maps include statewide tax lot level maps of wildfire hazard and the wildland urban interface. Throughout the video, I will describe why OSU developed these maps, the science and data behind the maps, as well as how specific state agencies will use these maps to inform community wildfire risk reduction efforts in Oregon. The science products that OSU developed are intended to support statewide community wildfire risk reduction programs. When developing the maps, we worked closely with our state agency partners who ultimately will be the ones using the maps to determine where regulations apply and where to invest in community risk reduction across the state. OSU has partnered closely with the Oregon Department of Forestry to establish rules that govern how the maps are developed and to provide education and outreach with the public as we develop the maps. The Oregon State Fire Marshal and the Building Codes Division are each responsible for implementing new community wildfire resilience measures and will use the maps to prioritize where those measures are implemented. More on that later. Finally, the Division of Financial Regulation has been a key partner helping to understand and communicate the health of Oregon's insurance markets. As we transition to talking about the maps that OSU developed, let me begin with why we developed these maps in the first place. In 2021, the Oregon Legislature passed Senate Bill 762, which created a wide range of wildfire programs, including two new community wildfire defense measures aimed at preventing future wildfire disasters. The first are new defensible space standards overseen by the Oregon State Fire Marshal. Defensible space refers to the ways in which vegetation is modified and maintained near a structure in order to provide firefighters safe access and to reduce the likelihood of the structure catching on fire as a result of flames or embers. The second measure includes new fire hardening building codes designed to reduce the risk of damage or loss in the event of a wildfire. These codes are overseen by the Building Codes Division. Fire hardening refers to structure design and material choices that make a structure more resistant to damage from a wildfire. For example, certain siding and roofing materials resist ignition or using attic ventilation devices that help reduce ember intrusion. Rather than blanketly apply the new standards and codes to all Oregonians, the legislation also directed Oregon State University to build two maps that will be used to determine on which properties and structures the new standards apply. Those two maps are the Wildland Urban Interface and Wildfire Hazard. The Wildland Urban Interface represents areas of Oregon where structures are intermingled with vegetation and where, if a wildfire occurs, we're concerned about the potential for a community disaster. Wildfire hazard represents the potential for, for wildfire to damage a structure as a result of the surrounding climate, weather, topography, and vegetation. The purpose of these maps is threefold. First, to educate Oregon residents about their tax lot level wildfire exposure. Second, to assist in prioritizing fire adaptation and mitigation resources to locations with the greatest exposure. Third, to identify where defensible space and fire hardening standards and codes will apply. In order for a tax lot to be subject to the new defensible space or fire hardening building codes, it must be in high hazard and in the wildland urban interface. Defensible space codes will apply to all existing and new structures that meet those criteria but new fire hardening building codes are not retroactive and will only apply to new development or replacement of certain specific structure elements. In the remainder of this video, I will walk through how researchers at OSU develop these maps and how the maps will be used to implement a statewide strategy that prioritizes homes and communities with the highest hazard. Let's begin with the wildland urban interface. Community wildfire disasters can and have occurred in a broad range of communities from rural to urban. The research is clear that around the Western US, most of those community wildfire disasters have occurred in a region that we call the Wildland Urban Interface or the WUI. The WUI includes areas where structures are intermingled with wildland vegetation. 
In Oregon, the wooey can look lots of different ways. In some cases, it appears as the rind or the margins around more developed community centers as they transition from the densely developed community center into the adjacent wildlands. In other parts of Oregon, the wooey looks more like what we think of as rural development, where there are small numbers of structures well spaced apart with vegetation growing in between. No matter what it looks like, the wooey represents those parts of Oregon where there is enough wildland vegetation to support a wildfire and enough development to result in significant damage to homes, critical infrastructure, and human lives. If this description of the WUI seems a little vague, rest assured that we mapped the WUI based on specific rules and criteria developed in a multi-stakeholder process and using the best available data describing where structures are located in Oregon. In order to be in the WUI, an area must have at least one structure per 40 acres, and it must be surrounded by wildland vegetation or within a mile and a half of a large block of wildland vegetation to account for the potential of ember showers. When we apply these specific criteria to the best available data, we generate a map of the WUI that looks like this. Overall, the WUI covers about 4.4% of the area of Oregon. Wildfire hazard represents the potential for wildfire to damage a structure as a result of the structure's environmental setting. Senate Bill 762 was explicit with respect to what environmental criteria can be considered when calculating hazard. The four criteria include climate, weather, topography, and vegetation. Wildfire hazard is comprised of two elements, burn probability and fire intensity. Collectively, these two elements represent the ways in which climate, weather, topography, and vegetation interact to cause wildfire hazard. Burn probability is the average is the average probability that a specific location will be impacted by a wildfire in any given year. It helps agencies and others respond to wildfire risk strategically by prioritizing actions in landscapes and communities where fires are most likely to occur. Wildfire intensity represents the amount of energy released by a wildfire. It is usually represented as flame length. The greater the flame length, the more intense the fire. Including this information in hazard calculations helps state agencies prioritize not only areas where wildfire is most likely, but also areas where fires will be particularly difficult to suppress or might result in more damage to structures when they occur. The four criteria do not account for specific structure level, defensible space, or fire hardening characteristics. Those kinds of risk mitigation actions for instance, sprinklers, metal roofs, managed landscaping, etc., are demonstrated to increase structure survivability and are hugely important to risk reduction actions. However, the intent of the map is to help state agencies prioritize community defense measures in areas with the greatest environmental exposure to wildfire. If and when a property meets the criteria for the relevant regulations, then those structure level risk mitigation characteristics, defensible space and fire hardening would be accounted for during the compliance process. It might be helpful to understand how we actually calculate wildfire hazard for each tax lot. The first thing to know is that before we summarize hazard for properties, we run the models and make all the calculations at an incredibly high resolution. All of Oregon is divided into uniform cells called pixels each of which is about 100 feet by 100 feet. So first, we ran simulation models to estimate burn probability and fire intensity for each pixel. Then, we had to adjust burn probability and fire intensity to better represent the ways in which irrigated agriculture reduces wildfire hazard. To do that, we identified all pixels in Oregon that are mapped within agricultural fields and which are also verifiably irrigated in at least one year between 2017 and 2021. For all pixels that meet those criteria, we reduced the burn probability and fire intensity values. After making those adjustments, we multiply burn probability and fire intensity together at each pixel to get pixel level hazard values all across Oregon. Finally, 
we averaged all the pixel level values within each tax lot, and the result is the initial tax lot level hazard value. Earlier versions of the hazard map stopped at this last step. However, those earlier draft versions of the map included instances where tax lot level hazard varied significantly among adjacent neighbors. For example, notice the peninsula of high hazard tax lots circled in black. The entire peninsula is surrounded by moderate hazard, and even within the neighborhood, there is significant variation. This phenomenon reflects variation in the underlying high resolution data used to calculate hazard. Based on feedback from the public, OSU and ODF applied additional steps to reduce local variation in tax lot level hazard and achieve smoother transition between hazard zones. Starting with the initial tax lot hazard estimates from the previous step, we averaged hazard values from the surrounding landscape within a 300 meter radius, maintained the irrigated agriculture adjustments, and recalculated tax lot level hazard. As you can see in this example, the additional steps reduce the amount of variation among neighbors and smooth the transition between hazard zones. The final wildfire hazard map available in the Oregon Wildfire Risk Explorer includes a hazard classification for every tax lot in Oregon. However, only the tax lots that are both high hazard and in the wildland urban interface will be subject to new defensible space or fire hardening building codes. As required by legislation and rule, the maps will be reviewed and updated by Oregon State University and the Oregon Department of Forestry at least every five years. The final tax lot level wildfire hazard and wildland urban interface maps are available on the Oregon Wildfire Risk Explorer. Visit the Explorer to learn more about hazard in your area and access a property report with details. Thanks for taking the time to learn about the science behind Oregon's community wildfire risk reduction efforts. For more information about the maps, administrative rules, and associated programs, please visit the resources listed here.